what's going on everybody um i'm here bringing you a chess set review from the from a set from the house of staunton this is their library reykjavik uh, series uh, also on the literature it says it's the reykjavik 2 series uh, i don't know if there's a difference anyway this is a representation or a reproduction i should say of the spassky fisher world championship um match uh, that was in uh, 1972, uh, according to the literature, uh, and it's a nice set. Overall, it's a nice set, and if you want to save yourself some time, I recommend this set. Uh, but we're going to go into the details here and give you, a, hopefully, a close-up look of what you'll be getting. Um, I found the pictures on the website uh, accurate as far as what you're getting, uh, what you'll get at home. Uh, but we'll go into each of the pieces here, and we'll go into the overall aesthetics of the board. I mean, not the board, of oh, the set. Um, so, the the material is boxwood. The white is traditionally boxwood, and, uh, you know, it looks good. It's a nice color. Uh, it's good material. And, um, you, can't, you can't go wrong with boxwood. And the black pieces that came with this, is I got the lower end set, is also boxwood. It's ebonized boxwood. I don't know what that means, the ebonized boxwood. Uh, are they some kind of alchemists? Are they turning boxwood into ebony? No, they're just blackening the pieces, right? So ebonized just means they're going to tint it black. Uh, but it, it I, And black actually is my preferred look for chess sets. I like the, you know, slightly natural off-colored white. The I don't know what they call it, beige or... Anyway, so I like the white and black look. I don't really like white and brown, especially when the brown is uh, highly... You, when you when you can see the grain when the grain just jumps out at you uh now i think that i think grain on the wood is beautiful like on the squares here it looks kind of nice and especially um it looks kind of nice on uh some furniture and uh, i don't know the buttstock of a rifle but for my chess pieces especially for my, for a staunton chess set which is kind of uh supposed to be uh simplistic not simplistic simple uh i'm a, i'm simplistic uh then you're kind of defeating the purpose when you put these, uh, you know, highly stylized uh, chess pieces or when the grain is just jumping out at you. Uh, it shouldn't do that, uh, in my opinion, in my uh, aesthetic, infallible aesthetic opinion. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? Oh, anyway, so we'll get into the pieces now. Um, the weight on the pieces is... What most people would consider double weighted. Uh, the king is advertised at 2.03 ounces, but I put it on the scale and it's at 2.15. So close enough, right? It's close enough. And if you'll, you can see that, you know, it settles nicely. That's too steep. Right? All the pieces are going to pretty much just, you know, they're not going to topple over. You're not going to tip them over unless you really like bang them. Uh, eh, I don't know, but still a good a good weight to all the pieces. The, I think the pawns should be a little bit heavier, but you know I get it. Uh, they're smaller. How much weight are you going to put in them? Um, now for the individual design of these pieces, uh, I like it. I like the set. Uh, not completely happy with each piece. Uh, and I'll go into it, and maybe you'll agree. Um, so here we go. Uh, the pawn. The pawn has a nice uh, heft to it. It's not too thin. It's not actually beefy. Uh, the collar, you know, has is nice accent to it. Uh, the base on all of these. Um, what I like about the base on all of these is the bottom lip here, or the bottom footing here, or the footing here, whatever you want to call it, doesn't stick out past the top part of this, you know, bottom part of the of the piece. And sometimes you get a set where this part sticks out a little bit more, and then, of course, the base uh, is bigger, but it's kind of a cheat. I mean, you get a, you get like a king, and they say it's a 1 1.65, 1625 base, but proportionally-wise, you're not getting more piece. You're getting, like, the he it's not as hefty, I mean, it's hefty, Heftiness is the same as you'd get from a, a 1.5 base king. I mean, you're just putting a thin layer 
on the bottom and extending it out and you you're saying the piece has a bigger base which would make you think that the piece in general is bigger but it isn't anyway and plus it gives it a little bit of a like a like a, a shadow and it makes it look like the pieces are floating on the board and I don't like that aesthetic I like the pieces look like they're grounded onto the board uh, and this this kind of base uh, does that okay next here we go the rook, which I said already, uh, well, maybe I didn't say. I don't like I don't like these deep crenellations. Uh, crenellations are supposed to be uh, halfway up the parapet, such that it covers from foot to chest the the man behind it. Uh, so these aren't even representative of what crenellations are supposed to be, you know, supposed to do right. Here, uh, form doesn't follow function. Uh, I just learned that phrase, so I use it all the time now. Anyway, um, and it also makes these pieces uh, more easily snappable. That's a word. So, I don't like it. It adds a little bit of, like, flariness to the top, which I don't like. It doesn't fit with the set. And I think this part of the set, the, the actual, the main part, that it should be a little bit thicker and the piece should be a little bit taller. So one, the biggest, my biggest gripe with this set is the rook. Should be bigger, should be beefier, uh, and it should be um, less ornate up top. And you could do that by making the kernel uh a less, less deep of a cut. The knight, the knight is your normal L-shaped piece, right? Uh, it's shaped in an L position, which is representative of the way a knight moves, right? You get it? So that's a nice aesthetic, right? This is a design pattern. Uh, and I want to mention also uh, the stunting piece here. You have like one, two, three, four, five, uh, six crenellations, five crenellations, no, six, one, six crenellations. And the older sets had only four. You'd have one here, one here, one here, one here. And then if you look at it, they would kind of point to the directions, the north, south, east, west directions that a rook travels, right? And that was also a nice aesthetic. Um, but uh, they started going away from that to add a little bit more heftiness to the top. The more cuts you have, the more flare. Uh, it looks like it's, you know, it, it, it gives it more uh, beefiness up top somehow by taking away uh, material. Don't ask me how that works. Um, so, uh, the aesthetics for the night being L-shaped, I understand. I don't prefer it to a more natural looking night where the head is tilted down as, you know, horses heads are naturally tilted down. Uh, but I don't hate it. Uh, the detail on the knight uh, uh, is is good. It's detailed as far as like teeth. The teeth look like separate little teeth. You got the nostrils going, you got the eyeballs, you got the mane, um, you got the top is kind of smooth except for where the mane is. And it's a good piece feel when you pick it up. It's it's nicely textured. The body has got like almost like where your thumb goes perfectly. So it's the the main I'm sorry, the, the knight fits with this set. It's a well fitting knight, let's call it. Um it's not my preferred kind of knight, but it does fit well with the set and I don't hate the knight, so it's a good knight. The bishop the bishop is uh if you look at the bishop this way and you put a pawn next to it, and maybe we hide the little ball with the flesh of my skin. Kind of looks like an overgrown pawn, right? And that's not a good look. I, I don't like that look when the pawn and the bishop kind of just look like uh, a mini-me. When the pawn looks like a mini-me of the bishop. Now, of course, that's not exactly all there is to the bishop. you got the little mitered angled cut, which is, again is representative of the, the angle or the diagonal in which a, a bishop travels. So you have this aesthetic going. Um which is one of the beauties of the Staunton sets. Uh, the head, or this part here, is not exactly a ball. It's more like an upside down teardrop. And then it's got the little tiny ball up top. So, it, and the collars, of course, it's got more collar to it. It's got three little uh, collars to it. And so it makes it stand out as, you know, different from the pond. Uh, not just in size, but just a different look to it. Enough where it doesn't look like a big pond floating around the board. Uh, so, good job. Uh, going there. They could have easily messed that up. Um, next, uh, the queen. The queen is your typical queen with, you know, you got the crown up here. It's not too pointy. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, 
you get the ball, so it matches the bishop uh, in that sense, and you know you get the collars and and the height. The height difference is good here. Um, many chess sets get this wrong, I think, where if the queen was designed to look exactly like the bishop, it should still stand out as the queen just because of the height difference, and 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 you should take it in instantly. It should be an instant um, thing you take in. You shouldn't have to like look at it and wonder. And even with the board cluttered, it should just jump out at you as being uh, different from the bishop. Uh, now, with relationship to the king, though, I think they've got this wrong. Uh, this queen is getting somewhat dwarfed by the king, and I never liked that look. I mean, I've, all, I've always understood the king to be uh, the queen's husband, uh, not the queen's father, although that may be true in historically, but... Uh, here, I think this is better, right? I think this looks better. It just is better where the queen and the king are closer in size. And yet, the king is still clearly, I mean clearly, bigger than the queen. If they looked identical, uh, other than height, you would still know that's the king in an instant. And the king should be the biggest piece because obviously it's the more, most important piece. Uh, it's basically you on the chessboard, but the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard and she shouldn't be getting dwarfed even by her husband uh, the king and now look at it again and you tell me it doesn't look small to you it looks small right okay so those are my two uh, I would say my two complaints on the design of this chess set is the rook is too small the queen is too small the design though as far as everything else uh, it's a great looking set uh, I'm not in love with the knight, but it's a good looking knight. Bishop is fine, the king is fine, uh, everything is good on this set. Uh, I like it. Uh, heftiness wise, weight wise, it's good. Um, the base, 1.5 inches on the king here, uh, is perfect for a 2 inch squared board. Uh, if you go bigger on the base, even by 1.25, so if you get a Six point. Uh, sorry, if you get a one point six two five king, a base with a with a base of one point six two five, it's gonna look a little bit crowded on a two square on a two inch squared board. Uh, I would go a little bit bigger. I'd go two and an eighth on the even maybe two and a quarter. Um, here's a little test I saw online that when the king and the queen are lined up like this, the bishop should travel easily through them, right? And when the pieces are a little bit bigger, you'll get a little bit bumping going on. Uh, it'll, it'll look more like uh, this. And Anyway, that's the test, and this, this one passes the test. So, uh, if you get this set, I recommend a 2-inch square board. Uh, maybe you like your boards. Maybe you like even more spacing. Uh, I kind of prefer more spacing as compared to less spacing, and uh, so I would get that if you like that. But 2 inches. For 1.5. Alright. Now, let's talk about um, this particular set as far as quality control. I have three, three discrepancies. Uh, we'll start off with from the minor to the major. Uh, here we go. The first one is uh, and I don't think you're going to pick this up, but I'll give it a shot here. Uh, during the ebonizing process, uh, so they put some kind of lacquer on the piece. Uh, the lacquer chipped. You know, it didn't harden, uh, or they didn't smooth out, or this was, or the wood wasn't smoothed out to begin with, which I tend to doubt. I think it's just the lacquer that is chipping, so you have a bit of roughness here, and, you know, it's kind of like cracking. Uh, I don't know if that's coming in. But that's what it is. So it's an imperfect finish here. Uh, it's kind of rough, and it, you can tell a bit that it's not. Uh, it's not in keeping with the rest of the piece. Okay, right, so that's one minor detail or one minor discrepancy. The second one is this knight uh, has kind of, you know, it just comes loose way too easily. You don't get that on the other nights, but this particular night comes out. Now it's not broken, 
It's just, I mean, you put a little wood glue here and then bickety blam, you have, you're good to go. Uh, but I don't like that it's come apart like that. Um, I've even played a complete chess game with these with this set. I've just had it for I've had it for like less than two weeks, and I'm making this video, but the pieces already, you know, comes apart. Um, and then now this is my biggest complaint, and this is I think is not acceptable, and something I'm going to take up with the House of Staunton, and then maybe, and then and then I'll make a follow-up review uh, video as to far what happened is that this particular night, the wood is cracked. Uh, uh, let's see if you can see it here. Right here, the wood is cracked. Uh, and also, not just in one place, but also right here, the wood is cracked. So this this pawn is going to end up cracking anytime soon. And this is how it's, it came. This is a brand new set. And that's not acceptable. So, um, again, I will take this up with, with the House of Staunton and let them make it right. And then I will report uh, what what happened. And hopefully, it'll be good news. I would hate to get stuck with a uh, cracked pawn. Okay, so that's the Reykjavik, the library Reykjavik uh, chess set from the House of Staunton. Uh, I think it's a very attractive set. Uh, I would recommend this set. Uh, I would recommend this set with a two inch square board. Um, one, because the base is great. Two, the color uh, is good, the material is good. Um, the heftiness as far as uh, weight is good, the size is good, uh, unless unless you don't like 3.25 inch king. If you think that looks a little smallish, then of course, you know, you can get a bigger size, of course, and you're going to pay the difference. Uh, I think this one was, as I recall, it was 119. Um, they had a 10% discount going on, and but then there was shipping, and I think the shipping was a little above $13, and the shipping took... I think it was took like six days to arrive, which is not really a big deal. But uh, I have a chess set from a wholesale chess and a chess set from a chess store, and neither one of those uh, stores charge shipping, and both of their uh, packages arrived uh, quicker than this chess set from the House of Staunton. And by the way, I did not get this board from the House of Staunton. This didn't come. I didn't buy. Uh, the whole set with board. I just bought the pieces. Uh, this came with another set, uh, which I'll review uh, soon. Um, so, there you go, folks. Uh, I hope you got a good look at the set. Um, I don't know, I'd give this set like an 8 out of 10 uh, as far as aesthetics, as far as weight, as far as heftiness. Uh, this particular set, because of the broken piece, because of the dismembered, it's not dismembered, because of the, you know, the night here. Hello, hello, not cool. Uh, and then, because of the the bad finish on the rook, um, I cannot give this more than an 8. Uh, if, if it didn't have those discrepancies, I'd still get, have to I have a hard time giving it more than like an 8.5. Because of, I think it was a smallish rook and a smallish queen. Alright, so... Uh, there you go. I hope you like it. Uh, if you have any comments, any little quips, any criticisms, maybe you want to talk about my little pudgy f fingers, which aren't so pudgy in real life, but hell, who cares, right? Uh, leave it in the comments. And I appreciate you watching, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get better at this video making stuff. I'm kind of old, so, you know, technology and all. Alright, later. What's going on, everybody? Um, I'm here bringing you a chess set review from the from a set from the House of Staunton. This is their library Reykjavik uh, series. Uh, also on the literature, it says it's the Reykjavik two series. Uh, I don't know if there's a difference. Anyway, this is a representation or a reproduction, I should say, of the Spassky Fisher World Championship um, match. Uh, that was in uh, 1972, uh, according to the literature, uh, and it's a nice set. Overall, it's a nice set, and if you want to save yourself some time, I recommend this set. Uh, but we're going to go into the details here and give you a, hopefully a close-up look of what you'll be getting. Um, I found the pictures on the website uh, accurate as far as 
what you're getting, uh, what you'll get at home. Uh, but we'll go into each of the pieces here and we'll go into the overall aesthetics of the board. I mean, not the board, of uh, the set. Um, so the, the material is boxwood. The white is traditionally boxwood and, uh, you know, it looks good. It's a nice color. Uh, it's good material. And um, you, can't, you can't go wrong with boxwood. And the black pieces that came with this, is I got the lower end set, is also boxwood. It's ebonized boxwood. I don't know what that means, the ebonized boxwood. Uh, are they some kind of alchemists? Are they turning boxwood into ebony? No, they're just blackening the pieces, right? So ebonized just means they're going to tint it black. Uh, but it... it I, and black actually is my preferred look for chess sets. I like the, you know, slightly natural off-colored white. The, I don't know what to call it, beige or... Anyway, so I like the white and black look. 